So, good morning and welcome to module 3 of the course of the uh, design part of the course. So, as you know that uh, in the design part of the course we have seen that uh, we, uh, we start uh, in case of VLSI digital design we start off with design specification and finally, we <coughs> and finally we have to reach for the stage where we can go and lay out for the chip. So, in uh, module 1 of, of this uh, design part of the course we have seen that that uh, the, the basic design flow and then we have seen that we start with the high, high level design synthesis that is we take a specification and then we go for a RTL level design. In the second module, we have seen that what are the different type of automated algorithms which can solve the different parts of high level synthesis. That is we can go for, we know that high level synthesis comprises scheduling, allocation and binding. So, we have seen algorithms which can uh, solve the scheduling problem, which can uh, solve the allocation and which can solve the binding problems. Then after the end of high level synthesis or after the high level synthesis procedure completes, then what do we get? We get a RTL level design that is register transfer level design or you can say a basic architecture level design. Now the next step of the design flow as discussed in module 1 or the introductory lecture of the course, we know we have seen that after the high level design is obtained or the RTL design is obtained that is the some kind of black box design is obtained, then our idea is to go for a gate level design. So, once the gate level design is obtained, then only we can place it, route it and go for the further down the steps. So, high level from the high level design we need to have a logic gate level design because uh, everything uh, ultimately has to be implemented in terms of gates and flops and then finally it can be and, and, then, and actually in the hardware library we have nothing but the gates and they are actually comprised of transistors. So, gates are a uh, unit block you can say the building block for digital designs and then they will be actually placed routed and will be going for the back end design. So, very important is that we have to convert the high level designs to a gate level design. So, uh, in, in now in this case what is we, what we are going to see, we are now in the second, mod, uh, second module number 3, we in this lectures 3 lecture series, what we will see? We will see 2 level Boolean logic synthesis. So, what do you mean? We will see what do you mean by 2 level Boolean logic synthesis. So, first what we are going to see is what do you mean by Boolean logic synthesis? So, actually the idea is that whatever I mean RTL design you have like we have say RTL design or black box design. So, they can all they are all nothing but they represent some Boolean functions or they represent some digital functions. So, you can easily represent them as Boolean logic or, Boolean or binary function or sorry Boolean functions which can have some binary values or in other words every in even RTL design will have some inputs and have some outputs. So, all the outputs actually are digital outputs and the inputs are obviously digital inputs because we are talking about digital design. So, all the output can be represented in terms of the inputs and also in the terms of input outputs also I mean if you have a, a what you call a single if it is a state if it is a sequential circuit then the output will be depending on input as also on the state and if it is a purely combinational circuit then the output will be depending on the input. So, in other words all the outputs of the circuits can be represented in terms of some kind of Boolean functions. Okay, so, now what happens? So, that is what all the uh, functions, all the outputs if you can say are being represented in terms of some Boolean functions or they have some binary output values. Then what is the idea? Then we can convert each of these functions to logic gates. That is say for example, we have a function say if x is an output for a, a one of the output of the RTL design, then we know that it will say it will be a function of say a comma b comma c where a and b and c are the inputs ok. So, sorry f x uh, is equal to some function of actually a b c. So, uh, uh, that is output x will depend on some input values of a b c. So, it can be like a b plus c or something like that you can have some any boolean you can have any boolean values or any binary uh, will have x will have a binary value and it can have any I mean uh, it can be represented by any boolean function. Now, so, uh, uh, that, that is the idea like for example, if it is an adder circuit. So, you will have this adder is equal to a x sorry a x or b. Similarly, if it is a, a, a carry part of a half adder, so the carry part will be a b. So, that means, output of all the all the outputs of the RTL design or the high level design can be represented by some Boolean functions. Okay. So, that now this Boolean functions has to be converted into logic gates. So, as it is a they are Boolean functions and they will take they will have a binary values. So, we can easily represent that represent them in term by using some binary gates sorry uh, in terms of some logic gates. So, that procedure is actually called logic synthesis. So, in this uh, uh, th 3 module uh, 3 I mean module 3 in the 3 lecture series we will see about 2 level Boolean synthesis or we will be trying to implement our uh, that is Boolean functions by what do you say? Two level uh, by, by using of a boolean I mean, by using logic gates, which will be having two levels. So now we'll see in details what do you mean by two levels, what do you mean by multiple levels, and so forth. 
Okay. So, uh, uh, this is the introduction slide. So, what I have said that we have seen that uh, we get the RTL design from high level synthesis right after high level synthesis we get the RTL designs. Okay. Then now the RTL circuit is available we have to translate into gate level design. Now that is actually called logic synthesis. Okay. So, if you are having RTL design so formally speaking so if you have RTL design you want to represent them using logic gates. So, this process is called logic synthesis because uh, all the outputs as I mentioned all the outputs of this RTL circuits will be represented by some Boolean function and anything which is represented by some Boolean function can be always represented by some logic gates or some gates because logic gates are also nothing but they also represent some Boolean functions like for AND gate it is A dot B so, having two inputs AND gate. So, the output or so the function of the AND two input AND gate is you can say that A dot B. Similarly, you have a very big function also. So, they can all be represented using the Boolean I mean sorry logic gates. Okay, so, that is why it is called logic synthesis. So, we are now going to see this module I mean this module is entirely dedicated to logic synthesis. So, module 3 and in the first uh, 3 lectures we will see how we can go about 2 level logic synthesis. So, now we will slowly see what do you mean by 2 level what do you mean by multiple levels slowly we will be coming into picture. So, whenever we say logic synthesis, so we are actually using logic gates. <coughs> if it is a combinational circuit and both logic gates and flip flop is a sequential circuit. Okay, so, now coming to the question of what do you mean by <coughs> sorry 2 level logic. Okay, so, what is a 2 level logic? In 2 level logic we are using only AND gates OR gates and inverters. So, inverters means A, a prime is if you inputs are non inverted. So, if you see C assume that inputs are A, B, C, D. So, if you want to get an A prime, B prime or C prime that is the inversion. So, you have to use a inverter. So, use AND gates OR gates and inverters. So, in two levels AND gates are used at the first level and OR gates are used at the second level we will see what does that mean. So, that means I think in your digital design uh, undergraduate course you have seen that uh, some function like f of x which I have told can be written as a b plus c. So, what does that mean? It means you have an AND gate for a b ok this is a b and then there will be a OR gate at the second level. So, it will be nothing but a c. So, it is a c so a dot b plus c. So, that means what in the first level you have put an AND gate and the second level you have put an OR gate. So, we will see with a bigger example. So, that is the basic idea. So, in a summer product form that you know already in our from undergraduate uh, digital design lectures. So, in a summer product means a b plus c d plus e f that is you are summing all the product terms. So, that is that is all the product terms means they are actually represented by AND gates ok and we are actually then all summing them a sum of products. So, your product are all the products are being summed. So, how can you generate the products? So, products are generated by obviously AND gates. So, first level you have AND gates and then you are summing them sum of products. How can you sum them? You have to use an OR gate. So, in the end of all these things you have an OR gate like this. So, therefore, it is called a sum of product form are represented by a two level logic where the first level is AND and the second level is invert um, second level is OR gates and sometimes you may also have A bar B. So, in that case you have to put an inverter and this will be A and actually inverters are not considered as another level. Okay, so, this is actually called a two level synthesis. Okay, so, in this lecture I mean in this triple lecture, so we are mainly going to look out look at two level logic synthesis algorithms. As already mentioned the main focus of this video course is that you have be will be telling you about the algorithms which can solve the problem. So, here you will be given some Boolean functions right. So, uh, the functions will be uh, uh, like some f of something 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 and then you have to automatically find out how they can be implemented by two level logic and obviously, you have to minimize you have to have to be, have, have, the, have to do your algorithm should be such. So, that the number of gates required is minimum because obviously, a function can be represented in many many ways a very simple example like x x prime. So, this is nothing but actually a 0, but if I write x plus x prime. So, this is nothing but a 1. So, uh, this 1 can be re re represented in this way x can be a 0 can be represented in this way in a very similar way. I can write x y z plus x. So, this is nothing but this is nothing but actually only you can say that this is nothing but x into x y plus 1. So, this is nothing but uh, x. So, this whole thing can be represented by an x. Okay. So, that means what all the functions whatever functions can be uh, written. So, same function like 1 0 or whatever given uh, like, like the example like x y z plus x is nothing but is equivalent to x. So, the idea is here you will be requiring a 3 input AND gate and a OR gate kind of a thing, but it is equivalent to x we do not require a gate. So, idea is that so, any uh, 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 any, uh, any of the function which will be represent with any of the uh, what do you call this. Uh, uh, Boolean functions which will be using to represent the outputs of your RTL circuits okay they can be represented in many different ways same function can be represented in many different ways like like just like x y z plus x is equivalent to x. So, the, the in other words uh, 
same function can be represented in different ways but the number of gates required or number of hardware required will be different so our idea here will be we have given a function so you have to represent it in such a way so that it is it is can be represented by the minimum number of gates again we will see that this problem is np hard and np complete very difficult to solve in a uh, to get the most minimum value it is very difficult to do it in a polynomial time or a less amount of computation time so again we will find out heuristics to do that so this is the basic agenda so as i told you in the beginning of the course or in, um, in many lectures of the course that most of the problems in vlsi design are all np hard and np complex that is you do not have a very simple or a computationally lower low complex algorithm to solve the problems that is you do not have a polynomial time algorithm to solve the problem of uh, this boolean function minimization now why we cannot represent it because we will find out that if, if the number of variables is x the amount of time required to spend is about the order of 2 to the power n plus so therefore, I mean, if you want to have a hundred function, uh, for hundred variable function, so to find out the minimum number of gate representation for that will be order of two to the power hundred, which is infeasible in terms of complexity time. So time complexity. So what you have to do, you have to take some heuristics to find out some uh, some representation, so which is very near the minimal as well as the execution time should be lower. So this is actually true for all the things like for different high level synthesis algorithms we have seen like your 0 1 ILP for high level scheduling then also we have seen that if you are going for click partitioning based binding and, uh, and so forth so they are all difficult problems and then you have found out good heuristics which can solve the problem for same thing we will be also doing for the boolean two level uh, boolean synthesis so we will see that multi level is a much more complex problem than the two level problem so we will all slowly come into that but now from the for time being we just assume that I mean from the discussion just you have you can understand that the problem also like this two level boolean two level binary so, so a two level uh, logic synthesis is also a very difficult problem and what is the problem the pro given a function you have to represent it with a minimum number of gates so that is actually the definition of uh, that a register transfer level to high level synthesis uh, which is given RTL designs uh, using which are obtained by high level synthesis. So, you have to represent them using gates so which is called logic synthesis and that number of gates should be minimum otherwise I mean as I given an example so similar function which is actually a similar fun same function can be represented in very different ways and they will require different number of gates to solve the problem like uh, uh, like x y z plus x you here you require uh, uh, 3 input AND gate and OR gate but for x same function equivalent and function x uh, this is actually equivalent to this so here you do not require any gates. So, therefore, uh, not only you have to represent the boolean functions by uh, some logic gates, but also you have to do it in the minimum number of gates ok. Like so that that is two input uh, logic synthesis I mean the two two level logic synthesis means and and a or, or and and or ok and in this case there can be other choices also like you can use the or gates at the first level and get in the second level. So, what is that is actually called product of sums like a plus b dot c. So, what is this is called the uh, POS form that is you are product in the sums ok. So, it will be what it will be a or b or b and then finally, you have to put an and gate and make it this is will be c. So, this is POS form. So, you already know from digital design undergraduate course that there are two types of represent sum of product and product of sum. So, is a product of sum. So, if you are using a product of sum form then the first level will be your or gates and the second level will be your and gates ok. So, you can also do, uh, may, may make it using uh, an and and or gates. So, everything is possible right and also inverters will also will be required if you are using and if you are not using an inverting logic like if you are using nor or an and gates. So, the inverters are already coming by I mean actually using because the and and the nor gates, but if you are using and or or gates or or, or and and plane like or gates and gates two level or and level sorry and level and or level. So, if you are using this so you require inverters because you are not using any of the inverters in the or and or and or planes ok, but if you are using nand or nor logic gates to represent the circuits then automatically the inverts are taken care of this one ok. Now, as I as we will see that uh, it is also possible to represent a circuit in multiple number of levels. So, here is two levels. So, we will see why it is very much required to represent it in multiple levels because two level synthesis is a very hypothetical situation as we will slowly see, but from the representation point of view or circuit synthesis point of view you cannot go on using, using two level synthesis you require multi level implementation and multi level means it will be something like this more than two levels will be there then in the end you can have an OR gate. So, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 levels. So, you can we'll slowly see that or you can also have uh, some I mean you can have intuition and then you can find out this much more difficult problem to solve as we will slowly later. So, in the last lecture uh, of this module we will see what how to can you go for multi level synthesis then it will be it will be very clear to you in formal terms that why multi level synthesis is such a difficult problem. Now, we will see that why we require to uh, circuit in more than 2 levels ok. So, slowly we will come to that. So, 
First of all, let me just we'll take an example. So then we'll again come back to this point that why multi-level and why two-level then? Okay, so in this case, let us see there is a function like <coughs> is a Boolean function which is f of x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6 plus x7, x8, x9, x10, and this one. So this is a sum of product form. So this is one product term, this is one product term, and you're making a sum. So two-level implementation is what is x1 dot x2 dot x up to x6. So you have an AND gate and x7 to x12 for again as a dot product uh, and the AND gate and finally you OR it. So these are two-level implementation because the first level is AND and the second level is OR and these are sum of product form. So these are two-level implementation, right? Now if you want to go for a multi-level implementation, so what is the multiple-level implementation? They will have more than one level. So you are actually splitting up these AND gates. So you see he has first done x1, x2, x3 in one, x4 and x5 in second level, and this is the case. And x6 he has taken a third level. So this is level one level to level 3. Again in this case also he has taken x7, x8, x9 in one gate and get x10 and x11 in the other and x12 in the another. So, it is level again 1, 2, 3 and finally it is a 4 level implementation. So, now if you just look at this, so what is the difference? So, you can understand that in this case it is very simple yeah, actually just whatever function s of p you have you can directly map it to this one. The some product terms is there and some terms is there and here you have to do a lot of things like here you have made a 3 input AND gate, 2 input AND gate, again a 2 input AND gate. You can also do with another 2, this can be also implemented by another 2 input AND gate like you can have x1, x2 here and then again you can have another gate called x3 here, make another AND gate over here and then you can connect it over here. So, it will be 2 input, 2 input and 2, two input AND gate. Similarly, you can have 3 input, 3 input and you can have again a 2 input AND Kind of. So, a lot of options will be available to do it. So, more the number of options, more difficult the problem is to solve. Here, there is only one option to do it. So, the algorithm or the uh, automatic techniques to convert the SOP to this two level implementation will be very simple. But here, there are a lot of options available, like it is a three input, two input, two input. So, again, you could have made it a two input and, and get two in, three input and get, and this can be again made a two input and get. So, a lot of options are available, and you have to take the best option. So, if there are a lot of options available, so the algorithm will be very, very difficult because you have to find out a solution from among all the options. But still, why we as I told you that we first go on, we can say that these are so this you can think that is a simple procedure or uh, that is you have to convert into two level implementation and multiple implementation is having a lot of options. So, the algorithm will be difficult, but still as I told you, you the I mean uh, uh, the, the, using a two level implementation is not a very feasible or uh, if I say that this is the circuit directly go and fabricate it, this is not a very feasible one. We have to convert this to multi level implementation and then only it can be fabricated. Now, we will see why is it so, but then and then we will see, but still why do you need to first go for a two level implementation. So, what I am saying in a nutshell that it is very given a SOP form, sum of product form very very easily you can go for this circuit implementation two level circuit implementation. But a two level circuit implementation cannot be directly fabricated. You have to convert it into a multi level circuit implementation, then only can fabrication be possible. Now, we will see why. And secondly, why we do not directly go for multi level synthesis. We actually go for two level and from there we convert. Now, in that logic, we will try to bring. Okay. So, if you want a two level implementation, then an AND gate is having five fan ins and we have a uh, if we have a gate with three fan ins, then multi level implementation is required. Now, you see what does it mean? If we have two level implementation, then we require an AND gate which has five inputs. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, sorry, in this case it is 6, sorry. So, we have actually said, yeah, it is a six level fan ins. And in this case, what is the maximum fan in, in fan in uh, uh, or the number of inputs for this gate for this implementation is 3. So, for a multiple in level implementation, we have 3, and for a uh, uh, two level, uh, uh, two level, I mean, implementation, it is a 6. Okay. Now, you see why is the problem, I will just show you, then we will come back. Okay. So, uh, the idea here is that nowadays, so that this thing should be making more clear so slowly when we will be going down the lecture. So, nowadays actually you are, you are using CMOS implementation. What is a CMOS implementation? So, in CMOS implementation, slowly, I mean in the next few lectures we will see the transistor diagram and why the reason will be made clear to you, but for the time being just take it from my side and take it that it take it uh, granted for the time being that in a CMOS implementation it is very difficult to fabricate a gate or even if you have a gate it is very expensive or it is very slow. If you have a gate which is having more than 4 inputs. So, if you have a 5 input AND gate, 10 input AND gate, 100 input AND gate, theoretically it is possible, but if I want to do such an implementation in CMOS and nowadays all the circuits are CMOS circuits. Okay. So, if you have that, the gates will be extremely, extremely slow and the other orders will be very expensive in terms of power or in, uh, in, uh, and in the fabrication cost. So, in case of CMOS, you can take a thumb rule that most or almost all the gates are having 4 inputs or less. 
So, if that is the case, then we are in a big problem. Then, whenever you have a two level implementation where some of the gates have more than four inputs, then you have to split it into multiple level inputs, multiple level circuits. So, that is the idea. But directly, if you want to convert uh, SOP form to a multiple level implementation, so the algorithm will be horribly complex. So, that will be slowly looking towards when you are going to the end of the third module. For the time being, so you take two points from me as granted. The first point is as uh, into and they are also intuitively clear that if you want to directly go for this multiple level implementation as there are many solutions available. So, the solution space is large and that is why the algorithm will be very, very complex. But here the solution space is very limited because the only way one way you can do it. So, it is quite simple to go for a two level implementation from a SOP. So, you go for that and then as, uh, as in the CMOS technology it is very expensive or the gates will be very much having high delay or low or low frequency or high you will take a lot of power if you are actually fabricating a gate with more than four inputs. So, that is why we have to convert this into this and uh, into uh, uh, if the number of inputs in a multiple two level implementation is more than four then you have to convert it you have to break it down. So, that the inputs for each gate remain 4 or less. So, that is why it is a two step process first we go for this two level implementation and then we convert it into a multiple level implementation to satisfy two things the algorithms will be simple as well as none of the gates will having will be having more than 4 inputs. Okay. So, that is what is the idea. Okay. So, now again again you can think that if, if somehow if for somehow you could have fabricated very good quality AND gates. So, obviously, this implementation would have been faster because for hypothetical case, because real case is not very easy to fabricate uh, 100 input AND gates or something like that, but had it been possible. So, there are only two levels. So, your circuit implementation would have been faster, but in this case you see 1, 2, 3 and so forth. So, many levels will be there. The circuits will be slower. So, therefore, we say that there are two main reasons why we want to implement a circuit in two levels rather than multiple levels namely speed of implementation and simplicity of the algorithm. So, speed of operation you can think is a hypothetical case because nobody can fabricate a very fast 100 input AND gates or 10 input AND gates, but the simplicity of the algorithm is there because direct mapping you can find out. However, in practical cases two level implementation may not be possible because reducing the number of uh, levels including fan outs and this one. So, if you have the why because if you are having a two level implementation then what is ha what happens if you have two level implementations then as you see the number of fan ins or the number of inputs will be in the gates will be higher and if you are reducing the number if you reduce the number of fan ins. So, fan out counts will be higher. So, gate having high fan ins and fan outs are slow that is what if you have a gates which have a 10 inputs or 20 inputs will be extremely slow. So, what we have to go. So, therefore, design libraries generally do not have gates with more than fan, fan ins this requires multiple level synthesis that is if, if the design library is not supporting any gates which is having more than 4 inputs kind of a thing. So, you have what you have to do you have to go for high you have to go for multiple levels synthesis. So, that you can handle this case. So, I, I have already explained this one. Okay. So, now, uh, so in this case, so if you in this in this example, so here the number of fan ins is 6 and in this case it becomes 3 and the main problem is with CMOS. Okay. Okay, now, actually uh, uh, that is what again if you see them in the in the when if you see the early early before the CMOS technology was there, there is some offline discussion which is I mean uh, more of more of for you and fabrication technology and implementation based technology not directly related to digital CAD. So, I mean before the CMOS technology uh, when CMOS technology was not there. So, you used to use I mean some kind of other stuff like call or uh, use programmable logic arrays or uh, PLS or PALs. Okay. So, there is another way of representing. So, now nowadays we represent CMOS gates to represent our Boolean function, but sometime back we also used to use programmable logic array PLA or programmable array logic array PALS. So, they are nothing but AND or plates. Okay. Broadly speaking these arrays implement a combination of circuits, they you can implement a combination circuit these arrays and they actually have a programmable AND planes connected to a set of OR planes. Okay. So, this is generating an AND or realization of the functions. Okay. So, we are not going into details of the implementation of the PLAs and PALS because nowadays that is there is not that is not much that is not much used uh, mainly in uh, today's uh, designs we mainly use what you call CMOS gates. So, in case of PLA and PALS you can just understand that they are nothing but there will be a planes or there will be a lot of AND gates there will be a lot of AND there will be a chain of AND blocks of AND gates over here and after that there is a block of OR gates. So, these AND gates and there will be block of OR gates. Okay. So, now so, you can there is a generic kind of architecture. So, you can use some of the AND gates as required to implement your function and then finally, you can use some of the OR gates from the OR plane and then finally, you can implement your sum of product form. Okay. 
So, you can directly represent sum of product or product of sum, product of sum if you sum of product will be represented by this way and if you use product of sum then actually will be or plane and and plane, thus the positions will be reversed and then you can represent uh, what you can call the, this, uh, you can represent your binary uh, uh, sorry Boolean functions. So, minima and obviously they were in two level implementation only because there is a one set of and planes and there is one set of or planes, they were not exactly a gate level implementation. So, just assume that uh, there was a set of a lot of and gate array and there is a lot of or gate Array, so, which you can implement your sum of product and product of sum from directly. So, I mean, so these things were actually, I mean, they long they, they used to be developed sometime back when CMOS technology or CMOS logic gates were not that popular. So, what people used to do? So, the ACAD algorithms used to do is that they used to minimize the representation in two level. Like, for example, as I told you, uh, so like this one is the case, like x, y, z plus x. So, if I want to represent it in a two level say, then what is my idea? I have to represent it in such a way in two level only that is sum of product and product of sum form only I have to represent because I have to represent in two level form. So, it will be either sum of product or product of sum, I do not have to think about multiple levels, but still I have to find out that what can be the minimum number of gates to represent it. So, in this case it is equivalent to x, so it is just a single connection. So, we will see some other other techniques I mean of minimizing this ok. So, the, the main idea here was that so this uh, as PLA and PALS were developed long back. So, two level minimization was developed in the early 50s. So, those algorithms are quite matured. So, with the introduction of the CMOS I mean uh, that uh, th these things were come there was a decline in popularity of PLAs and PALS ok. But PLAs and PALS were being continuously used since long time. So, a lot of uh, algorithms for minimizing the two level number of gates. So, if you have a two level implementation. So, PLAs and PALS were the most popular one. And so, the algorithms have been quite good algorithms are available or it has been lot a lot it has been reached a saturation where given a Boolean function. So, you can optimize in such a way so that they can be represented by the minimum number of gates in a two level fashion. So, if your architecture is two level, so the algorithm will give you a Boolean function representation taking the minimum number of gates in two level representation. So, those algorithms are very strong. So, we will see those algorithms. So, now even the in two just gas algorithms, we go in a two step basis. So, given any Boolean function. So, what you do first go for a two level implementation and we minimize our, our circuits. So, they minimize the number of gates or minimize the number of Boolean functions in such a way. So, that they require the minimum number of gates in two level implementation. And now, with this arrival of now CMOS is there. So, CMOS is become more popular than PLAs and PALS. So, what we do? So, now again from two level to, mul to multiple level implementation, we do as a second step. Okay. Okay, so, and because the CMOS has maximum 4 fan ins or 4 input and gates, 4 input gates are only possible in CMOS. So, uh, what do, so, uh, what do you do? So, the, uh, in, uh, the uh, so, what in this triple lecture we will go, we will see 2 level Boolean logic synthesis and further in the module we will see how you can convert them into multiple logic synthesis that is the basic idea because uh, the two level logic synthesis uh, algorithms are very powerful and they are actually still a first phase two round if you have if you say that I my final aim is a multiple level synthesis but still the process is two level first we go for a two level uh, first we go for a two level synthesis and then we minimize the function in such a way so that minimum number of gates are required to implement the two level implementation and then from two level we go for multiple level implementation because wherever you find the number of inputs in the gate is more than 4, you have to break it up that is basically the idea ok. So, that is being told about in this point because uh, optimization of multiple logic inverse network whose nodes represent functions which are represented as two level circuits that is the basic idea. Because even if you go for multi level implementation still we are one of the very important intermediate representation is two level implementation. So, that is the idea. So, we will see we already know that. So, we'll now from now on in this triple lecture we are going to focus on optimization of the circuits in two level form. So, uh, we assume that our circuit can be implemented in two level logic and then we will be minimizing the function. So, that minimum number of gates are required. Okay. So, we know that the input output of the RTL can be represented by a Boolean function that is very well known. Okay. Then in logic synthesis we will implement in actually in number of gates uh, we, we will be implementing in two level gates format that is and or plane or, or and plane depending on the sum of product or the product of sum form. Okay. And our main idea will be that you have to minimize the number of gates to for this implementation. Okay. So, this is actually called minimizing Boolean functions. So, whenever we say the Boolean logic synthesis or Boolean synthesis or whatever or log, then you have to our main goal is that you have to minimize the number of gates required to do this. Okay. And simplicity is measured in terms of number of gates and gates and the gate inputs of the circuit. So, obviously, I mean uh, complexity is number of gates as well as the number of inputs to a gate. So, if you are using 1 2 input and gate and 1 20 input and gates, so obviously 2 input and gate is lower in cost than the 20 input and gates. Here, because you are assume uh, as 
assumption is that we have we can fabricate n input AND gates if n can be as large as possible. So, as our as for, as for the current time or for the current triple lectures, triple lecture our assumption is that we are going for two level implementation. So, uh, our cost of implementation of a function is the number of gates as well as the number of inputs to a gate, because uh, we assume that of gates with a, a n where n can be any large any arbitrary order can also be fabricated. Okay. So, that is the primary objective logic synthesis to determine a minimal gate representation of the function. So, what do you mean by minimal gate representation? So, minimal or optimized gate is measured in the terms of number of gates and number of inputs to the gates. Okay. That is what we are going to do. So, you all know that our uh, this thing. Uh, so, we can represent our uh, stuff what you uh, what you can say that we can represent our Boolean functions in sum of product or product of some forms. Okay. So, now let us just quickly see some definitions. So, what is the product term? So, uh, so actually first there is something called a letter. Okay. So, what is the letter? So, letter is a constant or a variable. Uh, now, we see what is a literal. A literal is a letter or its complement. For example, 0, 1, x and y are letters, 0, 1, x, x prime y are literals. In this case, 0, 1 are constant literals, x and y primes are variable literals. Okay. So, this is the definition of literals and variable uh, literals and letter. Now, we see what is the product term. So, 1 is a product term they are all the standard definition a variable literal. So, x is a product term y is a product term x prime is a product term a conjunction of variable literals where no literals appear more than once is also a product term like x y z is a product term, but x prime y is also a product term, but x prime x is not a product term because the variable x is appearing twice. Okay. What is the sum term? Sum term is a formula where 0 is a sum term a variable literal like x y z are also x y individually x comma y comma z individually they are some terms a disjunction of variable literals who where no literals appear more than once like x plus y plus z. So, this is actually a uh, what you can say x plus y plus z or x plus y or x plus y plus z plus a, a prime or something like this are nothing but some term. Okay. So, now you can see some example x dot y prime is a product term x plus y is a sum term because you are actually having a disjunction over here a conjunction over here is yes, sum term and x is both right because x is nothing but a it is a variable literal. Okay. So, it is both a sum term and a product term on the other hand x x prime is neither a product term nor a sum term because the letter is appearing twice where it is to 0. Okay. So, that is what is the example and the definition third definition is sum of product terms. So, what is a sum, sum of product term is called 0 is a sum of product term a product term like x y z is a sum of product term and a disjunction of product terms like x y z plus x y plus x plus something like uh, what you can say that y prime or something like this. So, already we know that this is nothing like but a sum of product form which you already we have read in our digital design undergraduate course. So, this is actually a sum of product form. Okay. So, uh, the cost of a sum of product form is determined by the number of product form. Now, again we have said that we have to minimize something. So, we have to minimize this function. So, if I say that I want to minimize this function means you have to minimize in such a way. So, that the modified uh, so that the modified representation is equivalent to f as well as it, it will take less number of gates to implement it. So, what do you mean by the cost of a function? So, it is the number of product terms like here we have two product terms. So, if you have two product terms that means what you require one and gate sorry one or gate to do this this is one or gate. Okay. And if you have two product terms here. So, that means what you require two and gates. Okay, and the number of literals. So, you have x y and y z. So, number of literals is x is 1, y prime is 1, 2 and then also 2. That means, you require 1, 2 input and gate over and 1, 2 input and gate y. So, obviously, so if you look at the circuit for this one quickly, so it will be nothing but x y prime is an inverter and then uh, y and then will be z, so there will be another and gate and then there will be a or gate in this case. Okay, so, there, sorry, this is a or gate over here. So, you will have a or gate over here. This is an or gate. Right. So, this is x y x uh, sorry x y prime y and x. So, the, 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 there are two literals and two literals. So, you require two input and gates two input and gates and there are two product terms. So, you require one or gate. So, it is obvious. So, that when you are talking about the cost of a function or that it means how many gates will be required to implement a circuit. So, directly depends on the number of product terms the number of literals. Okay. So, broadly speaking the number of product terms determine the number of and gates the number of determines number of literals determine the number of inputs to a gate. Okay. Okay, so, this one has two product terms and four literals. So, in this case we have already seen this one. Okay, now, a sum of pro, uh, uh, product of sum term. Okay, so, in this case one is a product of sum term a sum term. So, what is a sum term x plus y is a sum term and a conjunction of sum terms like x plus y x prime plus z this is a actually a POS form. Like, so, this is actually a sum term this is another sum term you are conjunctive. So, it is a 
product or sum of product form. Okay, so, again in this case also uh, what is the cost of this determined by the number of sum terms, how many sum terms are there and the number of literals or the same way as I have done for SOP formula. So, broadly speaking the number of sum terms determine the number of OR gates. So, how many sum terms will be there in this case two sum terms, so there will be two OR gates and the number of literals determine the number of IN gates. So, in this case we have two sum terms, so there will be two OR gate, one OR gate will be here and one OR gate will be y here and there are four literals, so four two, if, uh, two input uh, OR gates will be required and this will be corresponding to one AND gate. Okay. So, now uh, two level formula can be either sum of product form or a product of sum form, they are equivalent. Okay. So, in this lecture we will be mainly looking at the sum of product form, okay. because uh, we know that both of them are dual of each other by de Morgan's theorem. So, for this we are not going to uh, discuss everything for both sum of product form and the product of sum form, we will be rather looking at the SOP form which is more popular. So, we will be looking at this form uh, to represent actually your and or plane and or plane kind of architecture. So, that will be mainly we will be looking into this one. Okay. So, now we will see uh, we are now slowly going towards the case that you have a function, okay, you have a function like this, how we can represent it using other equivalent function like we have said x y z plus x. So, these are sum of product form, this is equivalent to nothing but is equivalent to x. So, our main goal is that how can we minimize this function that is how can we represent this function in another equivalent way. So, number of literals as well as the number of terms is less. Okay. So, for that we are going to look at some difference. The two basic steps of minimizing the Boolean functions namely determining the prime implicates and finding a subset of implicates which cover all the terms in the product. Okay. So, this is what is the slowly I mean for the time being prime implicate, subset, covering etcetera may not be clear. So, slowly as we will be looking at the definitions things will start becoming more clear. So, what is an implicate of a function? So, implicate of a function is a product term that is included in a function that is the definition. That means, for example, x y z is an implicate of x y. So, f y x of x y z is a function which is actually x y. So, okay. so the, uh, what is x y? x y represent is x y z and x y z prime because f is a function of three input variables x y and z. So, if you are representing that is equal to x y that means x y this set actually is x y z and x y z prime. So, obviously, this is an implicate of the function because it is a part of this function. Okay. Now, definition 6. So, definition 6 it says that a prime implicate of a prime is an implicate that is not included in any other implicate of the function. That means, in this case uh, let us see by an example. So, prime implicate is an implicate of a special type of implicate. So, that it is not included in any other implicate of the function. So, a function can have lot of implicates. Okay. So, this one implicate, this one implicate and this one implicate. So, in this case you can say that these are the two implicates of the function. Okay. So, you can say when a function implicate will be a prime implicate, it will be a prime implicate if and only if this is not included in any other implicate. So, we will see for example, this x y z is not a prime implicant of this one. Why? So, it is a new function. So, it is a new function like this. So, what is the new function? So, new function is say that f of x y z is equal to f of x y plus x prime y prime z prime. Okay, so, this one is not a prime implicant of this one because it can be expanded into x y z and it, it will be comprised of x y z prime. Okay, so, now this term the, this product term can be represented uh, if you can it is comprised of two other implicates this x y z and x y z prime. Now, we can say that so x y z is a implicate of this function, but x y z is not a prime implicate of this one because x y z is contained in this one. Okay, so, if I say that x y z is a implicate of this function right because this is the function. Okay, so, now x y z is a implicate of the function because it is comprised in this function because x y can be represented as this one. So, obviously, this is included in the function, but this is not a prime implicate because x y z is included in the implicate x y of the function. So, this is not a prime implicate, but x y is a prime implicate of the function. Now, you see x y is a x y is also a implicate because x y is included in the function. So, obviously, uh, because x y is included in the function because obviously, this each term each product term is also an implicate of the function that is very obvious because x y is included in the function, but this is a prime implicate because x y is not contained in any other implicate. So, it has two impl uh, so if you think that this uh, this uh, what is this function has three implicates like x y z x y z prime this and again x y are some of the implicates of the function. Now, you can easily obvious that it x y is not contained in this one. Okay. So, in this term. So, obviously, x y is a prime implicate because x y is not contained in any other implicate. So, if a implicate is not prime, then it is possible to obtain a prime implicate by removing some literals out of it. Okay, that means, what is not a prime implicate. right? Now, if you are removing x from this and still obviously, if you are removing some uh, I mean, uh, problem in some literal over this, it should belong to the function. So, in this case, if I remove x, so obviously, x y belongs to the function and it will become a prime implicate. So, that is what is being told in this definition. Now, next one is essential prime implicate. Now, if a prime implicate includes a mean term that is not included in any other prime implicate, then the prime implicate is essential. So, what does it mean? It means that 
uh, a prime implicant is what? It is saying that a prime implicant like in this case in this function x y plus x prime y z prime. So, what why, why we call it as a prime implicant? We call it as a prime implicant because this guy is not included in any other implicant. So, that means it is a prime implicant, but x y z is also an implicant of the function or of this function. Okay. But, you call it, but x y z is not a prime implicant. Why? Because this is com uh, comprised in one implicant of this one. So, this is not a prime implicant. Now, we will see what do you mean by an essential prime implicant. Okay. So, uh, a prime implicant that includes a mean term that is not included in any other prime implicant, then the prime implicant is called an essential prime implicant. So, it is very easy, good to explain by an example. So, we say that for example, this is having two prime implicants namely this and this. Obviously, there are two prime implicants because this is neither included in this nor this one is included in this. So, both of them are prime implicants because x y is not included in x prime y prime z prime and vice versa. The prime implicant x is essential because it contains this which are not contained in any other prime implicant this. That means what? So, this is actually having two implicants is x y z and x prime sorry x y z and x y z prime. Now, you see both of them are not included in this prime implicant. So, that means, x y is have a mean term. So, actually these are actually called mean terms. So, if you remember your digital undergraduate course. So, all these product terms are actually also called the mean terms in sum of product form. So, these terms are not included in any other prime implicant. So, it becomes essential prime implicant. So, why do you call it an essential prime implicant? Because this prime implicant has some uh, what do you call mean terms or some product terms which are not included in any other prime implicant. So, to represent this function obviously, this prime implicant has to be included, okay. but if there is a prime implicant which is not essential, then it may be dropped like we will see in another function like this one like x y plus x y prime plus x z prime. Okay, The prime implicants are this, this and this you can easily verify Okay, because this is neither included here nor included here and vice versa. So, none of the terms can be included in one another. So, it is all these are prime implicants, but some of them may not be essential prime implicants because x z prime if you see x z prime it is nothing but x y prime z prime and x y z prime. Okay. If you can open it up. Now, you can see x y prime z prime is in x y prime. So, what is x y prime? x y prime is nothing but x y prime z and x y prime z prime. So, if I open it up, I will get this. If I open it up, I will get x y z and x y z prime, if I open this one up. Okay? So, now you see, so x z I am breaking up into x y prime z prime and x y z prime. So, you can see x y prime z prime is actually in, uh, included in this guy x y prime z prime this one is there. So, x y prime z prime this guy is already included in this and x y z prime is actually included in x y. So, this guy is having two lit uh, what do you call what do you say uh, two uh, mean terms we, uh, one is included in this and one is included in this. So, this prime this uh, prime in this prime implicant is not an essential prime implicant because it can be dropped because uh, this. Uh, so, so, in other words what do, what do I say what do what they mean to say is that uh, among them this is not an essential prime implicant. Why? Because its components are available in some other prime implicant. So, it becomes a non essential prime implicant. And why these are essential prime implicants? Because they have some mean terms or some product term which is not included in any other product term uh, any other prime implicant. That means, if you want to represent a function. So, you have to obviously, have the minimum or uh, minimum you should have the you should have the essential prime implicant. Because essential prime implicants will have some terms which is not included in any other term. Uh, and if the uh, if a prime prime implicant is non-essential and you can drop it because these components are already available in some other terms. Okay. Now, you see uh, how now what how now you can see that if we have to go about for determining a minimal representation minimal Boolean, Boolean representation function of a sum of product form, then we have to find out the prime implicants. So, you have to find out first prime implicants then you have to find out what are the essential prime implicants. So, if you can find out the essential prime implicants they have to be present if you if, we, if you drop an essential prime implicant that means you are losing something. That means, essential prime implicant means it has some term with product term which is not available in any other prime implicant. So, obviously, that has to come into picture. So, if you can find out the prime implicants and then you can find out which are the essential prime implicants, then more or less your job is done. So, because then you are finding out some terms which have or some implicants which have product terms which are not available in any other. So, they have to be included and some terms like 
this one some prime implicants. So, uh, in this case what happens? So, in this case this prime this is a prime implicant, but still it is available in two other terms part by part. So, you can drop it. So, our step is in two ways. First, you have to find out what are the prime implicants. So, what are prime implicants? Prime implicants are the terms which are not included in any other. So, if there is a term which is totally included in other like the example we are taking x y z plus x. So, in this case this is not at all a prime implicant. Why? Because this is totally embedded in x because x can be represented as x y prime z prime then x y z prime then x x y prime z and then x y z. If you bring it up, it can be open up into four terms. So, obviously, this one is included in this one. So, this is not a prime implicant. So, you can directly drop it. Then you remain with only the prime implicants. Then you find out what are the essential prime implicants. Essen because essential prime implicants are the one which has a term which is not included in any other term. So, obviously, you have to have the essential prime implicant. So, once you can go about this, then you have get a very minimum representation of your circuit. Okay? So, what is the theorem? It says that if the cost of a Boolean function depends on literals, then a minimal SOP must always consist of a sum of prime implicants. Okay? So, that is I mean just the proof is very obvious. So, let us assume that f is an SOP which is minimal and one product term is non prime. That means, what it is saying that if you are going for a minimal representation of SOP form. So, you should not have any kind of a non prime implicant that is obvious because a non prime implicant is one which is already included in another. So, if you prove it in a formal way we go for a formal proof we go by counter logic proof counter positivity proof kind of a thing. So, let us assume that f is a SOP which is minimal and one product term is non prime. So, another SOP obviously will exist which is equivalent that can be obtained by replacing the non prime implicant because other implicant actually another prime implicant will comprise the non prime implicant which is equivalent. So, obviously, you, you can remove the non prime implicant. So, the cost does not increase and the formula is equivalent sorry the formula is equivalent to all those. So, we reach a contradiction. So, SOP is minimal on and all the terms are prime implicants. So, how the proof goes? The proof says that if you want to have a minimum representation SOP form. So, all the product terms should be primes. So, assume that there is a product term which is non prime. So, now obviously, this function is has an extra term which is a non prime. Now, you can obviously, remove the a uh, non prime term and it will be still be equivalent. How? Because you because the non prime implicant is included in some other prime implicant. So, obviously, you can remove the non prime implicant the function will become smaller in size. So, it will be less complex and it will be equivalent. So, obviously, you if you assume that SOP uh, uh, f is an SOP which is minimal and yet one product term is non prime is false. Okay, so, let us take the example. So, let this be the uh, expression. So, a prime implicant of f is y. Okay, if f is you call a prime implicant of f is y because uh, there is no other term which uh, there is no other term actually which will uh, there is no other I mean uh, uh, term in this case which will actually comprise of y. Okay, so, now the SOP can be represented changed to x plus y. So, it is x plus x sorry. Uh, so, the uh, expression is x plus x plus x prime y. So, it can be represented in, in equivalently in x plus y. Why? Because you can see that x prime y is actually included in this. So, x prime y is not a prime implicant because y is a prime implicant because y cannot be included in any other implicant. Okay, so, that is y becomes a prime implicant. Now, x prime y does not is not a prime implicant because x prime y can be included in y. So, it can be represented in this one. Okay, so, we have represent this one in this. So, the new property is removing by this one. So, we are removing one literal like x prime has been removed. So, some, some this uh, expression becomes simpler. Now, it has two prime implicates x plus y. Okay, that is what is the idea. So, that is I mean this uh, definition is obviously it was also very simple uh, to understand that if you want to minimize your circuits. So, oh sorry if you want to minimize your representation and uh, then what you have to do? You have to find out the prime implicates and you have to take them. So, if you have any term which is non prime, so that will not actually form a minimal representation. So, that is what is being this is what is being understand okay? uh, what is being been done. Now, we have to find out some algorithm you, or, or some automated way where, where you can do it. How can you find out what are the prime implants? So, given a function we have to find out the first the prime implants. Then we will see how we can go about finding the essential prime implants. So, we will go step wise. So, first thing which you have seen that first we have to eliminate out all the non prime implicants because having a non prime implicant we have already proved that is a big problem big headache because it is already having some terms which is already present in other prime implicants. So, better remove all the non prime implicants. Then the question arises how can you do it? So, there are different ways of doing it. So, today we will see the tabular method. So, what is the tabular method? The tabular method works like this. So, if you have a SOP form like x y prime and x y sorry x y x y prime where x is a product term not having the variable y then it can be uh, there can be a consensus to generate 
this one. So, we can have we say that x y prime plus x y okay, x does not have the term y then obviously, it will become as x common and y plus y prime. So, this will be changed to 1. So, finally, we will have this one. So, it is also called one distance merging because we have to cancel, we cancel out the y y prime and we have this one. Also, this is called a consensus. Okay. So, we are using this consensus, we will try to see how we can go about uh, finding out the primes. Okay. So, let us see, let us just look, let us have a look at the algorithm. So, we first represent the SOP form in canonical form. So, what is the canonical form? I think already you have written undergraduate course. So, if you have a function like x y prime x y z, so is a function of 4 variables w x y z. So, it, somebody has written it x prime y prime plus w x y and x prime y z prime. So, what do you mean by canonical way? So, this actually represents by x prime y prime this can be and if you have to open it up canonical means you are opening it up then x prime y prime then uh, x prime y prime. So, you will have w prime z prime then x y x prime y prime will be common then it will be w prime z then also you can have w prime x prime y prime z then you will have w x prime y prime z. So, this x prime y prime are common you can have w prime z prime w z prime w prime z and w z. So, this is how you can open up. So, if you are opening it up this actually forms the canonical representation. So, if you just look at this function this can be represented in a canonical way in this function. So, we are not looking at this term. So, you can see x prime y prime z uh, w prime x prime y prime z prime then w prime x prime y prime z then w x prime this one and then this one these four terms are actually coming from this. Similarly, you can see that this will be giving these two terms and so forth. Okay. So, these are we are actually representing in a canonical way this is the first step. Now, what do you do? We see all pairs of adjacent terms that is the pair of terms in which can there are consensus can be applied. So, we will see with an example. So, this idea will be clear. So, we will take two two terms of this consensus or two two terms of the canonical form and then you can find out if there is a consensus. So, what is the consensus? Consensus means x y prime plus x y. So, you can read cut this x and it will become sorry cut the y's and it will become a x. So, you can find out if there is a consensus. Okay. So, the consensus are the implicants to not necessarily prime. So, we will see about it. Okay. So, this is the next step and then finally, we re uh, repeat this step still no more consensus can be found. So, the idea is that we may first represent a canonical form, then we take two terms at a time or uh, uh, in a step and then we will try to find out the consensus and we keep on doing it till no more consensus can be found out. Okay. So, all the terms that forms the new consensus are included in the own terms and since they are not prime, we will mark the old terms and non prime and not use for further consensus. So, we will illustrate this with an example, it will be more clear. It says that if there are two terms from which you have generated a consensus like for example, x y prime plus plus x y. So, you, you cut out this x and find it will remain as capital X. So, obviously, this capital X will, will co comprise x y prime and x y. So, this will now become non as primes and x will become a prime that is the idea because this x y prime and x y are comprised in x. So, obviously, these things you can delete because they do not no longer remain primes only x will be remaining. So, that is what is being called we mark the old terms as non time and non use for fan circumstances. So, that is the idea and we keep on repeating it till no more things can be done and finally, what do you do all terms that are absorbed by the new terms are marked as non prime finally the terms that are not marked are the prime implicants like whichever terms are has been consumed by consensus are removed and and, and finally you keep on doing it and finally the terms which could not found out find a consensus remains and they become prime because they cannot be included in any other term okay so let us take with an example so this is your example okay so what we do is that first we divide make it the table and we divide it into four parts so here there is no primes like w x y z so none of the terms is having a prime here what you are doing? Here only one term is having a prime like w x y z. So, only one term is having a prime. Here two terms are having a prime it is w x prime y prime z. So, two terms or sorry two uh, what you call alphabets or literals are having a prime. Here w x prime y z prime. So, here two literals are having a prime. Okay. Here three literals you can say are having primes like w prime x prime y prime z w x prime y z prime and here w prime x prime y z prime. So, three literals are having a prime here four literals. So, you are actually dividing it into this one. So, why you are dividing it? Because you see in if you just see those terms w x y z prime and w x y z. So, in this case w sorry w x y z prime and w x y z. So, you consider this guy as capital X and this guy as capital X. So, it will be this x x z z will be cut out and finally, will this two will make a consensus term will be w x y. 
So, that is why we are actually uh, in this uh, we are dividing the table in such a way. So, that if you just compare this elements from these two you get a consensus. Similarly, if you uh, compare these two you will get a consensus, but you cannot because here there is one none of the term is complemented here two terms are complemented. So, if you compare this one and this one you will never get any consensus because here you are having uh, w x y z and here you are having say w x prime y prime z. So, you see there are two terms in which there is a difference in, in the terms of complement. So, there cannot be any consensus. So, that is why this table is made in a very intelligent way. So, that this uh, the table is divided in such a way. So, here we have 1 complement sorry 0 complement 2 complement 1 2 and 4 sorry 4 complement 0 1 2 3 and 4 complement. So, these two guys uh, terms can have consensus similarly these two and this two. So, you cannot have consensus from here to here because here there are no complements here there are 4 complements. So, what you have to do? So, you have to just find out whether there are any consensus between these two terms obviously. So, it will generate x y z prime. Similarly, you can have to compare this one with both of this. So, if you compare with both of this so what you will get? So, you have w x prime y prime z and here it is w x y z prime. So, uh, these two guys will not have any consensus, but if you compare these two guys you see. So, you have uh, w uh, w x y z prime which is this one and here it is w x prime y is not having this and z prime is present. So, this one is not there. So, just if I uh, take this term over here. So, now you can easily see that I do not have a consensus over this. So, these two terms are not having any consensus. Okay, so, now, uh, so these two do not have any consensus. So, what we can do is we can drive out with say terms from these two uh, all these two terms will have to be compared with all the three terms. So, you can here very easily see that if I take this. So, it will be w prime x prime y z w prime x prime y z prime and this guy is having w x prime y z prime. So, this is the guy I am taking. So, you can see that uh, in this case if you see very clearly. So, this part is actually the x and w and w can be eliminated. So, if you take this, so this w this w prime and this w can be eliminated because x prime y z prime this is also x prime y z prime. So, finally, this will like give you a consensus term of x prime y and z prime. So, this is how we can go about this consensus. So, uh, this is what I have told you. So, if you compare this with this, so you get the consensus term this. Similarly, these are marked as non prime because now uh, these two will be non prime, this will be non prime and this one will be prime because these two guys are included over here. So, the second column is created where this uh, this new term will be placed. So, if you look at this table, sorry, if you look at this table you understand. So, these were the terms. Okay, so, so, what we have done? So, we can we can start with these two. So, these two we will get as y w x y z and z prime will be cut. So, this will be one consensus term. So, now this will be a non prime, this will be a non prime and this will be a prime over here. Okay. So, now in this case also we can see that if you are having trying with this two. So, it will be w prime x prime y prime. So, this will actually become your x part and the z and z prime will get cut off. So, this is the new term available w prime x prime and z prime this is the consensus term. Okay. So, now this will be actually your prime this one will be prime and this will mark as non prime correct. Similarly, if you try out for whole thing. So, you will find out a table like this. So, you can find out that or we can have a consensus which you can just see and try out we we'll get it all this thing. So, you can find out that all of these terms like this one with this one, this one with this one we could have find out a consensus and this is your new table uh, the next part of the table. So, here you can find that these terms were included in at least one of the consensus terms. So, none of them are prime and here everything is a prime for you. So, here also you can see 0 number of ne negations or complement this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. So, again you have to repeat this procedure by taking these terms from these two rows then again terms from these two two rows then again mutual from these two rows and finally, you are going to get as this two you will get by you will find out that these two terms could not have a consensus because it is w x y and this w x z prime. So, these two terms could not have any consensus, but again if you try to see that if you have if you want to find out that uh, you have to if you try these three elements and try to compare with these four elements you can find out that we will get these two consensus term that is x prime y prime and x z prime. Okay, so, all these terms are actually included in these terms because we could find these terms by consensus having a consensus among these. For example, if it, it, it this one says that it is nothing but w prime x prime and y prime. Okay, so, we have a term like w prime uh, sorry x prime and y prime. Okay, so, here you are having a term like 
this term if you take, so it is actually like by x prime y prime and w. So, this w will be eliminated and finally, we get a term as x prime y prime and x prime y prime. So, this one this actually this two is generating this one. Okay. So, in this similar you can find out that all these terms will can if, if you take a consensus you will get that these are the two final terms and so the, all the of them are included over here, but these two terms do not have any consensus when you want. So, they will still remain. So, this one is two prime implicates and this one are two prime implicates. So, we have four prime implicates like this one. So, you can see that now my function is nothing but the four prime implicates of these functions are nothing but w x z prime w x y x prime y prime and z prime. So, this is my all the prime implicates are here. So, you can think that they are having at least some implicates or some uh, mean terms or some product term which is not available in any other like this guy will have some terms, this guy will have some terms, this guy will have some terms and this guy will have some terms which are not available uh, sorry I mean uh, these are all prime implicates because this guy is not available here, this guy cannot be included over here and this guy cannot be totally merged over here. We are not actually finding out the essential prime right now, we are only finding out the prime implicates. So, what are the prime implicate means? That means, this, this uh, term cannot be totally included over here and it is true for all others. So, essential prime implicate means it will it should have at least one term which is not available in any other. So, that will come in the next stage. So, first what we have done? First we have eliminated all the non essential primes sorry we have eliminated all all the terms which are non primes. Non primes means what like this is a term. So, it is actually included in this term. So, w x y z is included in w x y. So, this is not a prime term. So, it can be eliminated. So, as of now in the first step what we have done we have taken a function and by using this tabular method what we have done we have tried to eliminate all the terms or we can call the product terms which are non prime. That means, they can be included directly in any of the prime implicates. So, here we are actually having this set of four prime implicates. So, uh, they actually represent a circuit in a much minimal way than the original function. So, original function if you see it was something like this it was a, you see the canonical function or if you see the quite a large it is quite a large function. Okay. So, this one we have reduced it to something like this. Okay, now, what will be next step? Next step you have to find out what are the essential primes, because if there are some primes which are totally included uh, say it is, a, it is not an essential prime that means, it does not have any prime implicant which is not uh, any implicant which is not uh, there in any other. So, it can be easily dropped. So, now, these are your prime implicates. Now, you have to find out which are the essential prime implicates. So, essential prime implicates are what? They are actually will have a term which is not available in any other prime implicate. So, they obviously have to be there. So, then you have to find out what are the essential prime implicates then and then we will remove some other primes if possible then that will be the most minimum representation. For now for a timing what we have done first step we have eliminated all those product terms which are actually not primes that means, they can be totally include they are totally included in some of the prime terms. So, they can be directly thrown away. So, that is what we have done. Okay. So, this is about the uh, I mean uh, the, uh, determining of the prime implicates by tabular method. So, uh, what was some of the steps you should observe over here? So, you can see that in this case the example was completely specified, whereas we do not have any do not cares. So, if the, now what happens if there is a do not care? So, if even if there is incompletely specified that is some do not care terms are there. So, if the uh, function is completely specified, so incompletely specified then what we do? So, uh, we have to go for the same procedure, but if the function is incompletely specified then what we go what we do. So, uh, basically you have to make it complete. So, if you make it complete then what do you do? You have to put some do not cares. So, now the same procedure will follow, but then if we find out what what is small modification we have to do. So, if there is a uh, prime implicate you find out and it only comprises of do not cares then you can directly throw away that one. So, that is what we are just going to see with a very small example like if you have a sum of product term like x z prime and x y z. So, this is let this be the specified function. Okay. So, and this bit this we told and then actually these are they say that these are the do not care terms that is we do not know what is the I mean you already know the concept of do not care. So, these are incompletely specified it says that for this obviously the uh, output is 1 and for this it does not matter then how do you go about it. So, if it is completely specified uh, completely specified function so it is we do this procedure, but if it is incompletely specified or if there is some do not cares then how do you go about it. So, in this we will take this example. So, in this case, uh, so this is the I, this is the case and they are the do not cares. So, how do you go about it? We follow the same procedure like we actually make it a canonical representation. So, in this case if you can see it is uh, d, uh, d prime do not cares are actually this one and in this case we have one x prime z prime. So, x prime z prime is broken down into x prime y prime z and x prime y z prime and this is actually already directly brought out and this were already in the canonical representation. So, this is a canonical representation in this way again you make up the tables. So, you have this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So, 1, 
one, two, three, four, five terms are there. So, here actually we have only one uh, negation, here we have two, here we have three. Would not have any terms like x, y, z that is not available here, ok. Then you, we could have a fourth column, but it is not there. So, we have only the terms where there is one complement. So, there are two complement and there are three complements. You do that, ok. So, you paste it over there and then you do the same way. You can try to find out if there is any consensus between this. So, in this case, I do not think there is a consensus because it is uh, x x y z prime there is two terms which is different. So, no consensus, but you can very easily find out that there will be a consensus between these two terms because the x prime y z prime and this x y z prime. So, you can easily delete out this x prime and you can get y z prime. Okay. Similarly, you can do above with the whole stuff and then you can find out that which are the primes and which are not the primes. So, there is the same procedure you follow. So, you will find out that all the terms here are included over here. So, uh, they all will become non prime. So, only two stuff will be remaining that is the final this one and one x y prime will also remain that you will find that it is not actually included in any other. Now, the question is should I directly if you have taken a completely specified function then we could have said that x y prime plus z prime or x y prime comma z they both comprise your prime implicants, but is a completely incomplete specified function and there are some do not care. So, now what will be your case? Now, you can see that this what is this x y prime. So, it is actually it can be represented as x y x y prime z and x y prime z prime. Right. So, this is nothing but x y prime z prime and x y. So, this is also a term which is a prime. So, this is a prime because it is not included any other because it we could not find any consensus for this. So, this is one prime and this is one prime. So, we should take both, but now you have to do a very clear observation that x y prime actually is a prime term, but it comprises only the do not cares. So, do not include it. So, if you remember our Carnot map procedure, so what you do? You include the do not cares only if it gives you some benefit. If you do not include the do not cares, if if they cause some problems. Like if you include one do not care terms and the number of uh, uh, number of guess becomes less or the number of size of that mean term becomes less then you include it. And if there is some uh, do not care terms if, if, which will increase the function size of the function then you just forget it. So, in this case there is one prime implicate which this is one term which exactly contains nothing, but only your do not care. So, if you carry on this one, so you will have a large size of the function, you will be increasing one more term and it is only comprising do not care. So, directly you can forget it. So, there is one prime implicant only that is z prime which comprises also the some non do not care terms. So, that you have to contain it. So, in other words, so what is the idea? So, we get two prime implicants, however, we do not consider this because it only comprises do not cares. So, we know that the even if it is an incompletely specified function, but completely specified function, you go about the same procedure. But what where you have to do a small distinction, the small distinction is that if you find out any prime implicant which comprises only do not cares, then it is actually you are carrying a dead stuff because that portion did not be used. So, you can directly throw away in this one. Okay. So, but if you find out a consensus term like uh, for example, if you are finding a consensus term say like x y z prime like if you are finding a consensus this one is actually x y prime z and uh, if you are having a sorry let us uh, take this two. Okay, so, if I have this one like this two like x y prime z prime and uh, this one x y prime z. So, if you take this sorry uh, if you take this two. Okay. So, you are having x y prime z prime and x y z prime. Yeah, if you take this two, so this one will be cut and this one will be cut and you are going to get y prime z prime. So, this is what is being obtained by some, some this one and this one. So, now you see we cannot throw away this one directly x prime and z prime. Why? Because it at least comprises one term which is a which is not a do not care and one term which is a do not care. So, this you cannot throw because it at least contains one term which is a not a do not care. So, you have to carry this do not care along with this, but this is a term which is having both the all the components as do not care. So, you can actually throw out this one. Okay. So, with this we close to this lecture. So, what we have essentially seen in today that given a RTL circuit. So, all the terms can be represented in terms of Boolean functions. Now, you have to minimize represent in a minimal way. So, what do you mean by minimal? Minimal means minimum number of literals and minimum number of terms. So, in this case we have said that we have to first go for a prime uh, representation of the function in terms of prime implicates because prime implicates are the one which cannot be included in any other implicant. So, obviously they are actually the essential components of your function. So, you have to find that out and for finding that out we have seen one example one, one procedure which is the tabular method they will actually give you the prime implicates and then prime implicates will have to be included in the function because they are actually uh, none of them are include, can be included in any other term. So, they are all what you can call good important components of the function or essential 
parts of your components or okay, components of the circuit. And then you have seen that if there is an incompletely specified function, the same procedure you have to follow, but you do not have to take some of the prime implicants if they comprise only the do not care terms. So, in the next class what we will see? So, we will see now we are having the prime implicants. Now, you have to find out that how we can find out the essential prime implicants or among this prime implicants a subset of the prime implicants. So, that you that fully covers your function and still the number of terms is minimal that we will see and also we will then go for the multi level stuff. Okay, thank you.